Hi, in this video now we will be looking at uh, Efficient Frontier. In other words, I will show you how to construct Efficient Frontier. This is a new video, it's, it's not different from the one we recorded in the class, but the one, that one is a bit longer, and because I want to use the videos for the, in the future in other classes, I will record a new one. Um, so, uh, to create Efficient Frontier, combining two assets, um, we will then need we will then need two asset returns. So let's assume that I have two companies, Rio and Vodafone. These are the prices as we had them in the class, during the class. So we have now created the log returns here. So just copy this. You don't have to copy them into the new spreadsheet. If you could ref reference them coming back to this step to the original return spreadsheet, that's all fine. But because we want to transition or the calculation to be easier I will delete this so I will copy them here then that makes the it, it, it doesn't take much time for me to record this video with this by copying bringing this returns into this uh, main spreadsheet so here now what we need is as you know we need uh, a measure of volatility of returns and expected return now, uh, expected return is the average of the historical returns. Now, in this case, I have this sort of historical return that I calculated and copy it into the sheet, sheet, as you can see. So, let's start here, uh, expected returns, or you could call, call it just average returns. Uh, let's call it uh, this Rio, and this is Waterfall. So, average return for Rio is basically the average of the past returns. The time period has to be, you know, you, you, you select it as you wish, but it uh, should be a sensible one. Um, and the volatility, measure of volatility, is standard deviation of the returns, past returns. So, we expect this sort of volatility to continue. To be exhibited in by the stock prices so so we call uh, we type st here this is all function most likely will be phased out soon but you can use stdf.s for sample right so done now what else do we need we need uh core values between the two stock returns that will be core value so as you can see, core value S is the one that you will be using because we're taking out the sample of data so that the numerator, sorry, denominator will have n minus one. And this here. Close the brackets. Core variance between them is positive, so this slight positive correlation. Next, um, since we have this now. We can start now creating weights. Let's call weight one for real, weight two for uh, waterfall. And when we create a portfolio of these two stocks, we always have weight one plus weight two equal to one, so it's 100. Yeah? So if weight, what one, weight is one, then one minus weight one must give us the weight two. So this could be, you know, we could start. Investing less, yeah, nothing in in this stock, and all of the funds into this stock. Then this gives us a portfolio of single stock. So let's highlight and drag this down. Actually, I don't want this. Um, let's allow some short selling to be. Uh, I mean, uh, allow for some short selling. Let's say we start with. Um, Let's say we start with minus two here. So we short sell Rio and long uh, take long position on weight two or waterfall. Now and we need to now decide the increments. Let's say we increment this by ten, zero point one. Yeah. So the next one will be minus one point nine. The next uh, portfolio. So this is the first portfolio. This is the second portfolio. 
right? So in the first portfolio, I have these sort of weights. Second, these are the weights. And now I should be able to drag this down. Uh, what do we have here? We still go. So we have 13 portfolios here. Now we have 25 portfolios. Now we have 31. So I think this is enough to create our bullet shape uh, feasible se uh, set. From there we will uh, kind of identify the efficient frontier of all the portfolios that are you know, most efficient given the uh, return provide, I mean, use the highest return for the given this level. So now let's create now standard deviation for the portfolios. Let's see there. Oops. Alright, so that is, uh, now we have to type the formula. It's SQRP. Um, uh, if you remember, it was the square of the product of portfolio weight and the return. Sorry, uh, standard deviation. So this would be another bracket. This times standard deviation bracket square plus. Now, because I will kind of drag this to copy the formula to the next portfolio, I will fix this cell G3. I won't, I don't want it to be moving. But this cell could be moved down because you know, for each portfolio we need to move the weights. Right, so plus bracket second weight times the standard deviation for the second stock squared plus two times the weights, yeah, times the core variance. Again, I don't want to change the core variance, so just fix it again and close the bracket. Oops, delete. It actually deleted my yeah let me double click completely remove my covariance of f4 done i think this is correct if, if i made any arithmetic errors here um, just leave comments so that i can correct it i don't think i did any arithmetic errors so no no so let's, let's just to the mean as well. Uh, this is the average return of portfolio, and then usually it's the weighted average of the return or weights times the return. Again, we have to fix this plus times the order value. Done. Now I should be able to drag it down here. Uh, I have the risk return combination now. All we need to see if, if we have achieved the bullet shape with this uh, combination. Uh, so for the to we need to draw it now on a graph with all these combinations, standard deviation combination. So we will be using uh, insert scatter plot. Scatter plot. So let's extend it. Right click select data add so we call this um, usable set and we highlight the x axis it's the volatility and remove the y values and then highlight the y axis it looks like we have a nice set here right so we will delete this delete this and uh, if we want, we could use uh, some sort of formatting here so that it looks nicer, maybe solid line, yeah. And uh, if possible, it would be good to have, you know, to have this this part from this point, the minimum variance portfolio. I think this is the minimum variance here portfolio. This portfolio, this portfolio is this. It's the one uh, with the standard duration 0 0.024 and the return 0 0.0168. Uh, this is the one. This looks like the minimum variance portfolio, but um, uh, let me have a look what I have in the minimum variance. Actually, it is this one. It's the standard duration 0 0.0249 against this. So uh, it's close to that one. Yeah, it's almost close to that one. This is the weight here. So we identified this here. Remember from the class, so almost yeah, thirty percent, almost one. So that's so it's 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 a 
portfolio just below it, I think. Yeah, will be the new line portfolio. It would be interesting to have this line color in different color. So we now identified what this is. We could actually do that in one set, can we? You know, it won't be nice ideas. So I don't know if you can color them separately. Yeah. It, I mean, it takes time, but you know, it looks it looks good, and you know, when you report the efficient point here, so start doing it here and go backwards, moving, showing the efficient point here. Yeah? Yeah, it's gonna take time, but if you make everything brown here and leave this part here, this is not efficient portfolio because for a given risk here. Um, there is a I mean, portfolio that, it, that has, has, is more efficient, which is this one here. Yeah, for again, so this piece are not efficient portfolio, but these. So this brown area here, light brown area, would show us the most efficient portfolios yeah, for this given risk in this feasible set. Okay, so that's the end of it. So you can you know, report this now and you know, label them as this one would be standard deviation, this label, Y label would be a return of portfolio. So this is all what you need for your uh, assignment, and I'm going to obviously have to define what each of the terms are before explaining. If you want, you can get rid of this chunk here. That is not necessary. I think we can start with uh, the minimum starting from 0 0.02, for example. Yeah? It gives us a clear picture now, and, and get rid of the two part, and get rid of this part here, and maximum being for example, uh, this clinic, so, yeah? yeah, this list isn't better. Okay, uh, see you in the class.